Jerry West. Well, that's um, <coughs> that's a good question. Um, there's there's a lot of them, but um, when you talk about the logo, um, Jerry was a gentleman to to everyone, and and you know he was the best. Um, when you talk about history, uh, you know you talk about. Uh, the game of basketball and what he stood for. Um, one of the, I guess, one of the stories is um, when I was with the Nets and Rod Thorne, and uh, we're going to Memphis to play Memphis, and I've never seen a grown man drool before, so um, I asked Rod why was he drooling, and he was like, that's my idol. And I was like looking for Michael Jordan, but Michael wasn't anywhere close, and I said, Jerry West. And um, that's when I learned a little bit about uh, West Virginia. And um, it was an incredible moment because I'd never seen Rod in awe before. And so um, to see that, um, to see Jerry um, and the way he handled Rod um, was, was very impressive. And uh, when you talk about West Virginia and basketball, um, D'Antoni, um, Rod, and, um, and Jerry West, um, you know, it was just, I was, it was a historic moment for me because I was learning about um, not just, I knew about Jerry, but just about West Virginia. And, and they're all very uh, well put together, uh, educated and uh, very smart. Um, but I just never saw Rod in that, that, that atmosphere before of being silenced and listening. It was like a little kid. Mike here in the front right. My heart is Dallas Morning News. Um, Jason, with Kristoff being out tonight, I guess what opportunities does that open up for you guys on offense and defense, and how do you expect them to, I guess, adjust with just not with not having his presence out there? Well, I think the adjustment is uh, no different than um, the Indiana series. They didn't have him, so I, I think they're they're pretty, you know, they're used to um, not having him. So. Uh, the adjustment, you know, with Horford or Tillman or someone, you know, that they can uh, go to. Um, and so I, I think there's not a big adjustment. It's, you know, they just came out of a series without KP. So um, we look for them to continue. Maybe somebody's minutes goes up. Um, but for us, uh, you know, understand what KP does at the rim um, with the shot blocking or changing shots, so uh, we have to be aggressive uh, when we take the ball and understand uh, their smalls are, are pretty good at blocking shots too, and so we have to account for who's at the rim. Natural back, Brad. Uh, Brad Towns of Dallas Morning News. <clears throat> Apologies, another non-game question. Wondered if uh, obviously you're tunnel visioned on on what you have guys have to do tonight, but I wondered any time in the last couple of days or today that it dawned on you that today's the anniversary of you guys winning the championship? It was just brought to my attention. I didn't even know. Um, talking to uh, Mike and Doris uh, from ABC that today was um, game six. And so just to, to understand, um, time flies by. Uh, but it was um, you know, a surreal moment to be able to, to, to win the championship um, and, and to do it with that team, um, with Dirk being our leader, uh, Jason Terry, um, they were asking, how, you know, what did you what did you think when the horn went off? I was like, we wanted to keep playing, but there was no one else to play, you know, when you win a championship. But when you're playing so well, you, you don't want it to stop. And so um, talking to them, you know, there was no one else to play. Um, and we were playing well. And as a older player, um, you want to keep going because you just don't know if you ever get back there. Third row on the left, Tom. Jason, I'm curious, you guys have obviously had a lot of good production out of your center position, uh, guys who were, you know, paint protectors, but how much experience do you have or how comfortable are you kind of going with, uh, you know, maybe PJ at the five and kind of spacing the floor out at the five position? Yeah, I think uh, we're, we're comfortable with PJ at the five, we're comfortable with Maxi at the five. Um, but Boston's done a, you know, a great job in the sense of taking the vertical game away and living with the layup. And so, you know, when you look at our quarterbacks, Kai and, and Luca getting to the rim, you know, we have to take that. And, and we're going to have to, at some point, if we can make enough to see if they can make that change. But if they don't, 
Uh, we can look at Maxi or PJ, you know, at the five. We're comfortable with that. We've done that during the season. Fourth row on the right. Uh, Tommy Mongols from the Dallas Morning News. Uh, Jason, we had another local legend die today, Robert Hughes. Not sure if you ever had any interactions with him, the uh, forward Dunbar coach who's a Naismith Hall of Famer. I, I did not, that's unfortunately. Uh, we'll go in the center. Can you just pass that right back into the center? Thank you. Fourth row. Hey, Jason, see you at Sony from The Ringer. Uh, the guys have been talking about needing to communicate more on defense lately. I was wondering when guys like Lively and Gafford are up guarding the stretch five, who's the second guy that you want to be in charge of your backline communication? Who else is going to be responsible for that? Uh, that's a great question. Everybody, you know, the, the game of basketball is about communication. And, uh, and for our guys, that's one of the things that we're trying to, you know, as much as communicate, the next step is to listen and uh, to be able to process what's being said. And so I think uh, for us as a group, we've been a little bit slower with that. So um, hopefully we, we've made that adjustment and we can uh, be better at that tonight. Go ahead, second row and left. Yes, Rashad Miller, uh, Dallas Weekly. What are some other things that you saw when you ran back the tape for the first two games that you feel the team should be doing tonight? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, talk about the last game, we put ourselves in a position on the road um, to, to win. And that, that's all you can ask for. Um, when you talk about um, one possession or, or, or two possessions, the, the, we have to take care of the ball. Um, just way too many you know, turnovers uh, that lead to points for them. Uh, when, if we throw it into the stands, at least we get a chance to set our defense and we feel confident that we can get the stop. Um, and I'll use the example of Exum with the pace, was trying to make a play, it, it goes out of bounds. We get to set our defense, we get to stop, and we come back. It's the live ball turnovers that are, that are hurting us, and we have, to, we have to take care of the ball. We gotta get more shots, but if we do turn it over, we, we need to give the prizes, the basketballs away to the stands and not, not to Boston where they can get out and run and get layups or, or a wide open threes. Third row towards the center. Hi, Jason. Aurelia for the German Basket Magazine. We know that you're very close to Dirk, and I'm kind of thinking that you maybe talked uh, last night about, you know, being uh, home in Game 3. Maybe you can share some thoughts or something that he said to you going now into this must-win game. Yeah, uh, I haven't talked to Dirk uh, here in the last uh, um, week. Uh, he has uh, FIBA obligations and he has tennis lessons and, and everything else, so he's got more important things. Uh, but we will talk uh, as we as as we're at home, and he's here uh, hopefully uh, for game three or four. And so, um, just to get some advice of what he sees um, here as we go forward. But um, I haven't talked to him since the Minnesota series. Any other questions for Coach? All right, thank you, Coach.